Welcome back to Weekend Live. Time now for our political panel and a warm welcome to Shane Newman, the Labor MP for Blair and Shadow Minister for Immigration and Border Protection, joining us in Brisbane. And James Patterson, Victorian Liberal Senator, joining us from Melbourne. Gentlemen, thank you both for your time, especially on a footy grand final long weekend. Really appreciate it. Let's start uh, Pleasure. with the big yeah, happy grand final story. weekend. <laughs> thank you. Let's start with the big political story of the week, though, and that really was the debate around renewable energy in the wake of that blackout in South Australia. We know that an emergency meeting of energy ministers is going to be happening on Friday now. Uh, James Patterson, I'll start with you. Labor has accused the federal government of using this situation as an opportunity to score political points. Malcolm Turnbull and Josh Frydenberg saying that some state Labor governments have set renewable energy targets that are unrealistic and that don't pay attention to energy security. Is that a fair link to make in your mm. view? Well, both the Prime Minister and Josh Frydenberg have been very clear about what the catalyst for this uh, blackout in South Australia was. They have said, as, and they are right, that it is a weather-caused uh, event, a weather-instigated event. There's no question about that. Um, it is a good opportunity, though, to review whether we have the energy security that we need in Australia, whether we have the stability in our energy system to uh, deal with events like this. And that's a perfect opportunity to talk about this issue and to examine this issue. And I think it's entirely reasonable for the um, Energy Minister and the Prime Minister to make this point. Uh, it is not a Was coincidence soon, though, uh, that the state in which this point? happened no, can I just ask, James? Do you oh, think it's, it's never too soon to jump make, in and make yeah. that point when, when South Australia was still in the dark at the time? Not at all. I don't think there's, it's ever too soon to make an important point about energy security and the stability of our energy grid, um, particularly in a state which has not had just this issue but other issues in, in only this year, where they've had to rely on the interconnector to Victoria and the largely brown coal-fired Victorian power base to prop up uh, its power base when wind has been intermittent or, or unavailable. So I think it's a very good, good issue to examine. Uh, some of these state governments do have extremely ambitious and probably unachievable uh, renewable energy targets that are way out of step with the federal emissions target, which was agreed by the Coalition and Labor in a bipartisan agreement to be set at 23.5%. Uh, that's a very reasonable, modest target. Some of these state targets are, are really ridiculously ambitious, and that does put the whole stability of the energy grid at risk. But if we are going to see a national approach to renewable energy targets like the Prime Minister is calling for, isn't there going to have to be some sort of uh, compromise to reach a common ground? I mean, the, the federal target compared to the other states is very modest, as you pointed out, 23.5%. The ACT is 100%. Queensland here is 50%. Shouldn't the federal government be looking at perhaps reviewing its target? I don't think so. I mean, the ACT target is just fantasy land and the Queensland target is not far off. Those are unachievable unless the state governments have uh, billions of dollars that I'm not aware of that they have, that they're planning on investing in renewables. Uh, and, and I don't know what plans they have to have backup supply to make sure that what happens in South Australia, for example, doesn't happen in their own states. Uh, so I don't think there's any reason to review the federal target. I actually think it's quite an ambitious target. It is certainly more modest than some of these state targets, but that's because they've been set without any plan to achieve them whatsoever. OK, Shane Newman, what do you think? Do we need to have a, a broader discussion about energy security and how aggressively some Labor state governments are moving towards renewables? We're always happy to talk about energy security, but what James said was true in the sense that the Prime Minister was opportunistic in relation to this. There wasn't much empathy shown for the 1.7 million South Australians who are dealing with uh, power blackouts, floods and severe weather events which have devastated their state. There wasn't much uh, encouragement and gratitude shown towards emergency service personnel, police and ambulance officers who are putting their lives at risk in supporting South Australians. Now we're always up for discussions in relation to this, but Labor took to the last election uh, a proposal that we would look at 50% uh, renewables by 2030. Other countries are doing much more, even New Zealand led by a Conservative National Party government, has got ambitious targets. Denmark, Norway, Germany, also led by a Conservative Chancellor, is undertaking this. So uh, we think the Prime Minister has acted in a disgraceful way, uh, an ideological bent towards the hard-right reactionary uh, members of his caucus. And he should be encouraging the workers who are actually helping businesses, communities and people in South Australia who are dealing with this tragedy, not making a political point about it. All right, let's move on to another issue. Uh, Wyatt Roy's trip to Iraq. Uh, James Patterson, 
He's been widely condemned from both sides of politics for this. Julie Bishop, though, really stepping up her attack on the ABC this morning, calling him a thrill seeker and saying that there would have been an outcry publicly if um, taxpayer money had been used to rescue him if he had gotten into trouble. Does he need to face some serious questions here? Well, I think the Foreign Minister and also the Prime Minister have made the government's view on this uh, crystal clear. There could be uh, there's no room for uncertainty about what the government's view of uh, Mr uh, Roy's activities here. Um, we do not encourage Australians to uh, travel to Iraq. It is not an appropriate holiday, holiday destination. Um, and what he did was clearly unwise and, and, and unfounded. So um, I think the, the government's been very clear, as it should be, that this is not something that we encourage. Shane Newman, do you think there should be serious consequences when White Roy returns to Australia? I mean, you know, the question about whether he has broken Australia's anti-terror laws. Well, he's certainly been irresponsible and stupid. I mean, what's he trying to do? You know, do a uh, Lonely Planet guide to war zones? It's quite extraordinary that he would do this. And he's a public figure. Now, he didn't find out about this by any of Peter Dutton's 82 media monitors who are monitoring the media 24-7. We found this out because why Roy disclosed this and also because he's been engaged in the media for the last week. Uh, it's an extraordinarily stupid thing for him to do. He put other people at risk and I'm wondering whether the Australian Border Force Counter-Terrorism Unit or any other agencies are going to interview Mr Roy when he comes back to Australia and to what extent did the government cooperate, even departmental officials cooperate, or the Minister in terms of foreign affairs or the Minister for Immigration and Border Protection or any of their advisers know anything about this because he's certainly been there for a while. We are alluding to that story today about uh, Peter Dutton's uh, communications staff costing taxpayers more than $8 million a year. But just, just sticking with your portfolio, Shane, Jim Middleton, um, our Jim Middleton yesterday spoke to Tasmanian Labor Senator Lisa Singh from New York where she's attended the UN Refugee Summit. Now she said Australia should consider resettling asylum seekers currently in detention on Nauru and Manus Island here in Australia. That if the government can't find a positive country to settle refugees that are in offshore detention, they're going to have to look here at our own country. We might have a listen to what she had to say. Any uh, attempts by our government to get this resolved as soon as possible, uh, of course, would be welcomed if it was to a country or a situation uh, w w that had a positive outcome. Now, I still believe that if they cannot find a positive um, country to, to settle uh, refugees that are in those offshore detention facilities, then they are going to have to look at our own country. They cannot continue to leave them there. The Papua New Guinea government have said they are closing down Manus Island. So, uh, you know, the question still remains, what is the Turnbull government going to do about this issue? Shane, I just wanted to get your reaction to that. I mean, that's certainly against Labor's policy, I would have thought, isn't it? Well, I agree with Lisa at this level. Uh, what is the Turnbull government going to do about these people in Manus and Nauru? They need to find viable, durable uh, third-party countries. Our policy is crystal clear, and Lisa should know this. That is that we believe in regional reprocessing, offshore processing, and regional resettlement and turnbacks when safe to do so. Why? Because it deters people smugglers and it also saves lives at sea. But my criticism of the minister and the Turnbull government is that they haven't done much or haven't told us they're doing anything about finding viable third party countries in which to resettle these people. You can't leave over 1,300 people languishing indefinitely in Manus and Nauru, certainly after the PNG uh, Supreme Court has made that decision, and we can't leave them staying there indefinitely. They've got to be resettled. And if the government's doing anything, they're not telling the opposition, nor are they telling the public, and this cannot go on forever. James Patterson, the question, I guess, does remain, what is the government doing to resolve the issue of refugee resettlement? Well, sadly, we see here, Liz, that uh, Labor's position is up for grabs, it is up for debate, uh, and members of the Labor caucus are openly defying uh, the, the Labor Party's position on this. We saw up, up in, during the election many openly defy it, but Bill Shorten assured us that there was uh, no wiggle room there at all. So I, I'll be watching that with, with great interest over the coming weeks and months. Uh, the government's position, though, is, is uh, 
absolutely clear, uh, which is that uh, there is no opportunity for these people to be resettled in Australia because that would send a very dangerous and damaging signal uh, that the, there is incentive for the people smuggler boats to start up again, that human trafficking is something that will be rewarded, um, and I think that would be a very dangerous and damaging thing. So there are two options available for people who are uh, on, on these islands. One is that they re if they're found not to be refugees, that they'll be able to return to their um, country of origin. Uh, and the other is, I think it's important to remember that um, these aren't detention centres in a traditional sense. They are open centres. People on the islands are free to work. They're free to participate in education. Um, it, is, it is not as evil and as terrible as some in the opposition, uh, including Lisa Singh, like to paint it to be. All right, we are running out of time. So I just want to ask about one final issue, and that's the bank inquiry kicking off on Tuesday. The CEOs of the Big Four due to front the House Economics Committee. And look, it's, it's going to be interesting. I mean, there's been a lot of build-up to this. James Patterson, is there a possibility that we could see more questions than answers come from this rather than it actually quell Labor's calls for a Royal Commission? Well, I think the banks would be very wise to participate in this in a, in a forthright and open way and to answer any questions that are put to them uh, by members of the House of Representatives, by the committee. Uh, this is what the Australian people expect, is that, that banks front up and answer questions and explain themselves, and I think that's a, a reasonable solution that the government has proposed. Uh, the, the reality is that a, a Royal Commission will not deliver uh, anything for bank customers in any reasonable time frame, uh, and at the same time it will put at risk the reputation of our banks as some of the most stable and reliable in the world. So that's not a path that we want to go down, um, but I am looking forward to hearing what the banks have to say at the upcoming committee hearings. Shane, is Labor going to be satisfied with whatever comes out of this inquiry? I mean, particularly if we do, do see it hold the banks to account and perhaps result in, in more regulation being slapped on them, or is it just going to be a continual push for a Royal Commission? Well, this is about the fourth or fifth default position that the uh, Turnbull governments had. First they said it was nothing to see there and then Malcolm Turnbull gave him a lecture. Then he talked about a one-stop shop. Now you've got a government control House of Representatives uh, annual cup of tea with the banks to talk about this issue. How long are we going to have rip-off after rip-off, scandal after scandal, before the Turnbull government takes seriously the public's concerns about what's happening in the financial services sector? What we need is a Royal Commission. And I look forward to the banks giving evidence this week. They should, and I expect their CEOs to cooperate. But that's simply not good enough, and the public knows this. Even members of James's caucus know this. There needs to be a Royal Commission. We need to look at the systemic and cultural failures, comparable world's best practice, the impact on the Australian public and those customers, also what's happening in terms of the failures of duty of care, how widespread corruption's happening in this area, what the, government, what the government's doing about it, what the regulatory authorities are doing about it. None of that will come out. It's likely to come out, and no action will come out of this week in relation to that, and no people will be redressed with no strong recommendations. What we need is a Royal Commission with power to summons people to make strong recommendations and give witness protection. They're the things that need to take place. The government knows it. Many members in James's caucus knows it. And the Prime Minister knows it. Instead, he wants to give him a $7.4 billion tax cut. It's not good enough by the government. The public knows it as well. All right, we are going to have to leave it there, I'm afraid. Shane Newman, Labor MP for Blair and Shadow Immigration and Minister and Border Protection Minister. And James Patterson, Victorian Liberal Senator. Thanks so much for your time this afternoon. Thank you. All right, we are going to take you live.